So ChatGPT has been part of my life for over seven months now. And there's one thing that annoys me the most, but that got solved in today's ChatGPT update. And a lot more coming in today's AI news. This is a creepy AI tool. They can see the reflection in your eyes and recreate a 3D world. Look at this picture of a man and take a zoom into his eyes, see Kirby and something else, and they're able to replicate a 3D world. Here is another example of like a classroom or something. Here is an example of a kitchen and it's pretty detailed too. And here's like a little library with books and you can almost kind of make out what the book is too. So they basically train the radiance field on the eye reflections by shooting rays from the camera and reflecting them off the approximated eye geometry. To remove the iris from showing up in reconstruction, they perform a texture decomposition. And you can see some of the struggles that they were having before compared to the new model. So they had some wild attempts like Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball. And you can see that this is the shape that they were able to make out from a fairly bad quality image. Here they also have Lady Gaga's eyes and they said that they can manage to reconstruct maybe an upper body or something like that. I really don't hope that this becomes a thing because it's messy everywhere that you don't see. Right? So if you guys gonna scan my eyes and try to see what everything's going on behind the camera, I don't like that. You wanna see what's behind the camera? Uh-uh-uh. You can now get ChatGPT to write 5,000 words all at once. And I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Step number one is just to go on the playground, click on chat and click on chat 16K turbo and increase the maximum length to 2048. Now you need to use the mega prompt that I'll actually leave a link to the creator here, Florian in the description. Step number two, continuing on this topic and you can see that it keeps writing. Now you can see if we copy paste it into a word count, you get 5,000. 300 words. The only thing bad about this is that it is GPT 3.5. I can see a lot of people using this for articles that are a little bit longer, you know? It's super annoying for ChatGPT to just cut off, write this short paragraph instead of 5K words. And if you would make a video out of that, it would be about 29 minutes. This AI turns 2D video into 3D video. That means after you shot the clip, you can now start moving your camera around in editing. Just look at this. So here is the input footage on the left. And then there are the previous models like Hypernerf. And in the lower left hand corner also we got NSFF. And then they have ours on the lower right hand corner. And you can see it's so smooth and it looks perfectly real like you couldn't really tell a difference. Here you can also see it with this guy taking a backflip and you can just stop it right in time, move the camera around as much as you want, and then continue playing the clip. Also this kid, you know, getting swung around by the mom and the editing here just being unreal like we've never seen before. As you can see on the left, you have a very staggered footage. On the right, you have this fluid motion that is just created from this new model. Here you can see more of how it works. So you can see that it's warping the world around her, as you can see with the black fields in the top left. You can also see the improvement here. Now, the limitations here is that they can only move a little bit left to right, up and down. The next step would be to recreate the entire 3D environment and be able to dolly around the character and generate from behind. You can already do this kinda mixing together a couple of tools. So it's right around the corner. Think about it. Can my camera just zoom past me to the back of my head? This new AI tool creates presentations, documents, and even web pages with just AI. Just give it a topic and it creates the entire outline for you. You can test it completely free. It's so easy to use and it will save you a lot of time. Step number one, just go to gamma.app. Now, what would you like to create today 
presentation document web page. And now I want to create a presentation. Sounds good. What would you like that presentation to be about? Let's say how to apply AI tools and AI automation in business. Let's see what it comes up with. Here they have an outline with about seven bullet points. These all look really good, including success stories. Okay, let's continue. And now we can pick a theme. So I think it's actually working in the background and I can click through a bunch of these ones. There's even a surprise me button. And I just got to say the design here is beautiful. Let's go with this colorful one and continue. It's actually writing it right in front of us. Just like that. Look at this. Then providing the next slide here. <laughs> it's even doing a timeline. Success stories, retail industry, healthcare. That was really cool. So now I can present this. And I think this is the coolest feature that you can edit with AI and use natural language to change what you want. One of my favorite slides was these key considerations. So I can, for example, say, expand on this, turn this into a timeline, split this into columns. I'm going to just say expand and it gave us this sub headline. Or if we add a card with AI, we can ask it add a card about why this is important for humanity. And we got another slide. Now you can just export to PowerPoint or PDF, or you can just present it right in the page. Just go back and forth between these amazing looking slides. So check it out on gamma.app because this is the future of presentations introducing GPT engineer. Just ask the AI what you want to build. The AI asks you questions and then it just builds it for you. Here you can see the beginning. So GPT engineer says specify what you want it to build. The AI asks for clarification, then builds it. Now you can see that it's prompted to build a multiplayer snake in the browser. Step number two becomes using a Python backend and you need to stream the state of all connected players, etc. Now it starts saying anything unclear. Here are some things that needs more clarification. So now it's asking clarifying questions. Then four questions remaining, three questions remaining, two questions remaining, and then one more. And here you can see the entire plan. Let's start with the server pi file. And now it's just continuing to make it all for you. I can't wait to play with this. I really want to set this up for myself and see if it can outperform auto GPT as we know it. I guess this would be a little bit different. You can now see that it's created multiplayer snake. It's fully open source on GitHub. It currently has 50,000 stars. And you can see at this moment, it is number one on trending on GitHub. The current limitations is that it's missing chain of thought prompting or reflection, which we've seen in the past be extremely valuable for it to improve and get better results. So uh, contributions are welcome. Now, if you made it this far in the video, I just want to say that if you're trying to use AI to automate your life, maybe shorten the time span that it takes to do your work or tasks that you're doing on a regular basis, I highly recommend checking out Patreon down below. I now have multiple AI courses showing AI automations, tools I use and how I optimize my life with AI automations. So click the link in the description to check it out. Thank you so much to all the patrons that we have right now. So click the link down below to join and on to the next one. This AI workflow is a game changer for any marketer or designer. You can do this in a couple of seconds. First, take a look at this Nike logo that literally creates a new perspective on the sign itself. So the first step is just to click on line art and you can just drop an image in there. The second step, just prompt it like this one, for example, aerial forest, and you can just click on run. And within a couple of seconds, you get an output here of a beautiful OpenAI logo. Here you can see some amazing generations that was created. Then just go to easygifmaker.com and you can just uh, literally just put every single one back to back. Such a good use case of AI. This new meta AI can clone your voice with only two seconds of audio input. And it sounds really good. This is Voicebox a new AI foundation model for speech that does some pretty awesome things. If you give it text, it can read it in a bunch of different styles. Penelope Porcupine and Sammy Sloth danced gracefully in the treetops. Penelope Porcupine and Sammy Sloth danced gracefully in the treetops. And you can use it to fix background noise too. Kind of like an eraser, but for audio. 
Sammy and Penelope's heartwarming friendship inspires joy. Sammy and Penelope's heartwarming friendship inspires joy. We think this is probably the most versatile speech generative model out there. This is still a research project, but I think that we're going to be able to build a lot of interesting things with tools like this. Here are the word error rates. Voicebox outperforms the current state-of-the-art English model Vol-E in terms of both intelligibility and audio similarity while being 20 times faster. They're also saying that once they have learned and trained this model on just two seconds, they can also translate into other languages using the same exact voice. So here they have the zero shot text-to-speech synthesis and here is the prompt style. Gapes, there's the first symptom. Gapes, there's the first symptom. Strangely, just horribly bad audio. And here is voice, here's the output. Voice box is the Swiss army knife of text-to-speech acing multiple languages, changing voice styles, and dishing out custom samples. It's obviously better, but it still has this like robotic aftertone to it, which I really don't like. His conduct and presence of mind in this emergence appear to conspicuous. So this is text-to-speech. His conduct and presence of mind in this emergence appeared conspicuous. Yeah, that one's kind of bad. His conduct and presence of mind in this emergence appeared conspicuous. It's really weird. It's kind of both robotic and real at the same time. Once I get access to this, I'm definitely going to clone myself with this compared to what I use now, which is 11 labs, which on my voice doesn't really work that well. If you want me to make a video on the best AI cloning tools right now, comment down below AI clone and I'll try to do that research and find the best ones. This AI tool allows you to create photorealistic 3D worlds that are all procedurally generated. So as you can see from this footage here, they are creating these worlds not with AI, but actually with math. Every little detail is randomized and customizable, even the wrinkles on a flower petal. You can have diverse objects and scenes in the natural world, like plants, animals, terrains, fire, clouds, rain, and snow that actually kind of looks realistic. In my opinion, it does still have like that 3D look to it, but besides the graphics, the actual simulation, physics, and what is drives it in the background is what really matters. The four key features that it has is that it's procedural, right? It can be created unlimited. It's diverse, so they can create all these assets that I just talked to you about. It actually creates real geometry, and it even does automatic annotations. This is really important because of the computer vision tasks, including optical flow, 3D scene flow, depth, surface normals, panoptic segmentation, and occlusion boundaries. All of this open sourced and in Blender. Soon anyone can make games using ChatGPT or other models. New game, top down 2D space shooter. Here you can see that it's just starting to write the code. Like here we have the bare bones. You can see bullets does not seem to do anything when hitting enemies. Enemy should fly somewhere in half of the screen and you know, he's continuing to write more. <laughs> it's crazy. Now he's starting to create more movement and you can see that this is like the chatbot update, right? Add health bars to the game and health bars to the enemies. And now I think he's trying to create an image with a hero spaceship. So now obviously creating more spaceships there. And now enemies and all of this using AI, of course. Now it's starting to look really awesome. And just like that, full 2D base shooting game. You can sign up for early access. Might need to show this to the guys over there at Developing Star Citizen. They've implemented AI reward systems into robot dogs. And this is how they're able to get a robot dog to do a moonwalk. A promising tool to achieve this goal is large language models. 
Recent progress in large language models for robotics has shown its ability to generate long horizon plans or directly generating code to intelligently orchestrate different primitive skills on the robot. However, large language models struggle with directly outputting low-level robot commands due to the limited availability of relevant training data. In this work, we propose using reward functions to bridge between language models and low-level robot actions. Specifically, we design a reward translator that maps user instructions to reward functions using code. The reward is then optimized using a motion controller to obtain low-level robot actions. Inside the reward translator, we cascade two prompts for the large language model to achieve the task. First, we design a motion descriptor that is prompted to generate a description of the desired motion following a given template. The description is then translated to reward specifying code by the reward coder. We then use a motion controller to optimize the generated reward function. We use MJPC, which interactively solves a trajectory optimization problem that maximizes the given reward to determine optimal low-level robot actions. So the big problem with robotics and LLMs currently is that they're not that good together. You can't say pick up an apple and it actually picks up an apple. So that's what they're solving in this paper. You can actually talk to the robot in natural language. So this leverages the power of LMs to acquire low level robotic skills. Our proposed system consists of two key components, the reward translator built upon pre-trained large language models that interacts with and understands users intent and modulates all reward parameters and weights a motion controller that takes the generated reward and interactively optimize the optimal action sequence here you can see the differences of success rate with the three models so first ours the second a reward coder only this is the blue line and code as policy. So this is basically the app that they have for the robot itself. And you can see facing sunrise, sit down, roll over, spin, lift one paw. It's performing flawlessly. And these are the things that it can't do very well with the previous models like lift object, move object, upright object, or even turn on faucet or open a drawer. So essentially instruction one was make the robot stand upright on two back feet like a human. And then instruction two was you actually don't need to keep the front paws at a certain height, just leave it out to the controller. Instruction three, now make the robot do a moonwalk. And it had to instruct it more. Moonwalk means the robot should walk backwards while the feet swings as if they are moving forward. Correct your answer. Amazing to see humans and robots working easier together. All right, that's it for today's video. Check out the Patreon down below for AI automations and joining the AI community. Also, check out this video here. I think you will like it and I'll see you over there. All right, peace.